Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Thursday, September 21st, 2017, and I want to return to the subject of iron batteries. So iron is a nice choice for battery chemistry for two reasons. One, it's cheap, and two, it is non-toxic. And I like both of those things if I'm going to try to build a battery at home. That means that if we built our battery in the backyard, we wouldn't have to worry too much about it uh, bursting and contaminating the groundwater or any other nasty environmental problems. Likewise, the battery would be very easy to recycle. So all of that makes iron great. The downside to using an all iron chemistry is that all iron is lower energy density than something like iron nickel. But adding nickel introduces all the problems we're trying to avoid is expensive and fairly toxic. So if we stick to an all iron chemistry and we accept that the power density is low, what is that battery good for? Well, it's good for stationary storage, things like if we wanted to store energy to, uh, to stay off grid or you wanted to store energy in case of a blackout, then a really cheap, really safe battery seems like a reasonable option. On top of that, an all iron battery is something that you could use for educational purposes to teach principles of batteries because it's all safe enough to build in, uh, in a simple laboratory like you'd have at a high school or even a kitchen or garage. So that's why to make an iron battery. How do you make an iron battery? So in this vlog, I've been talking about how to make an iron battery on and off for almost a year. And it comes down to this. You need one side of the battery to be iron metal and one side of the battery to have iron three, iron three something. And to keep the matter simple, you want to use iron three dissolved in water. And if you oxidize iron and put it in water, then you got to find some chemistry to keep it in water so that it doesn't crash out as rust. Because as it turns out, rust is not conductive. And it's really, really hard to move electrons into and out of it, and it makes a very poor cathode. So given all those constraints, what do we have? Well, we need something like iron EDTA, which is what I ended up using. It's a very soluble form of iron. It's an iron fertilizer. It's still very safe. And iron EDTA is uh, fairly stable, even up to fairly basic pHs. So that's what we centered on. We left off in this iron battery saga with the fact that iron 3 EDTA in a battery still corrodes an aluminum current collector. So aluminum's not compatible, which leaves us with the ongoing question of how do you construct the battery physically? I mean, the chemistry's all pretty straightforward, but what do you build it out of? And I'm gonna try copper here shortly, a copper current collector. The alternative is carbon. Carbon works very well and doesn't corrode, but carbon is not nearly as conductive as copper. So there's the plan. Acquire some carbon current collector anode and cathode, back that up with copper to increase the conductivity, and then build a battery and see if the whole thing corrodes quickly. In the end, we'd like to have a stack of these iron cells capable of holding a couple three volts and capable of being scaled up to house scale, ideally. So that's the plan. Stay tuned over the next week or so as we dig into the practicalities of that. I'll put up some how-to videos and you all can tell me what you think and where you think I ought to go next. Uh, we talk about iron and batteries and chemistry and building stuff in the old garage lab right here in the Allen Lab, Monday through Friday.